Good day everyone! We are from group number 2 and today, we will conduct a debate which will focus on the topic of the Cavite Mutiny. This debate will emphasize the exchange of ideas, thoughts, and opinions of both sides which are the Spanish and Filipino side, with regards to their different views and perspectives towards the said event. We hope that this debate will give you an idea not just on the events that happened during the Cavite Mutiny, but as well as the reasons why those things happened in the first place. Now, let us have the moderator for this debate. Welcome to this debate, participants. I am Kyla Janine Lestanias, and I will be your moderator for this debate. I will start by having an introduction for the topic to be discussed in this forum. On the 20th of January, 1872, about 200 men comprised of soldiers, laborers of Darsenal, and residents of Cavite headed by Sergeant La Madrid rose in arms and assassinated the commanding officer and Spanish officers in sight. In this forum, we are going to hear the story of both sides regarding the matter and identify which among the two of them is more accurate and reliable. Is it really the Filipino version that is credible? We'll find out. Next, let me introduce our dear participants for this debate. We have the proposition side. May Fajardo, Krisa May Fulhensho, Kristin Joy Fulhensho, Iris Ivy Esmael, and Leigh Francine Manassan. Next is the opposition side. Marjorie Jano, Trixie Hayoma, Anna Haril Lim, Jalen Lim, and AJ Manubay. Now, I am going to explain some procedures and reminders for this debate. Both sides will have an opening statement first before proceeding with the question and answer portion of this debate. There will be a rebuttal after each question. The Filipino side will start their opening statement first and the first question will be answered by the Spanish first. All things that will be presented and argued during the debate should be based by facts only. Lastly, please maintain proper manners and refrain from saying vulgar and foul words. We will start the opening statement of the proposition side. The floor is now yours. Good day to our moderator, Ms. Lustanias, and everyone else here. As we all know, the Cavite Mutiny has two faces, which are the Filipino and Spanish perspective. I am Chris Amy Valencia, and my team will represent the Filipinos. I will state two sources to justify our position. All informations are based on my research, and I did my very best to find only pure facts and credible details. The first source, let's talk about the Filipino perspective written by Dr. Trinidad Herminigildo Pardo de Tavera. He is a Filipino scholar, historian, and researcher. And what I've been discovered about him, he is also a relative of someone who was arrested and punished during the Cavite Mutiny. According to Dr. De Tavera, the starting point of the incident was merely a mutiny against Spaniards by Philippine soldiers and laborers of the Fort San Felipe, which is the Spanish arsenal in Cavite on 20th of January, 1872. In response to the injustices and dissatisfaction with the draconian policies of Rafael Izquierdo, who was the Governor General of the Philippines at the time, these policies include abolition of privileges and the prohibition of the founding of the School of Arts and Trades. What are those privileges that is cured or removed? First is an exemption from tribute or form of taxes for those Filipinos inside the arsenal. And the other one is an exemption from polo e servicio or forced labor. How does this privilege work? One man in one household is of legal age and will be forced to work whether he likes it or not. Izquierdo used the aforementioned revolt against the Spaniards as a means to prolong their power. He concluded that the Filipinos intend to make a national uprising, which is untrue. The second source, El Filibusterismo, also known by its English title, The Reign of Greed, is the second novel written by Jose Rizal and the sequel to Noli Metanger. It continues the knowledge criticisms of the abuses and corruption of the Spanish government, as well as telling the story 
of Filipino life during the Spanish colonization. The novel is dedicated to the three martyr priests, Gamburza, who were executed by Garote on 17th of February 1872. Their deaths were hastened in a public execution at Bagumbayan, Philippines due to their alleged crimes of treason and sedition, as well as false accusations charged against them by Spanish authorities, as they were part of the secularization, a movement in which native clergy who desired to have their own parishes instead of being assistants to the regular friars. Remember that the local Catholic Church was ruled by Spanish friars. The Gumburza were involved in this movement, so they were falsely accused of being the alleged masterminds of the insurgency of native Filipinos working in the Cavite Arsenal. This serves as a warning to Filipinos never to fight the Spaniards again. Take note that this is a scene evidently witnessed by a young Hazarizal, which is why we consider the Filipino perspective to be the primary sources and most relevant side in the Cavite mutiny. So tell me, is it wrong for the Filipinos to fight for what is right? To protect their rights? To have their voices heard by their own country? Is it necessary to kill innocent people in their own land by those invaders just because of the personal interest of those in authority to stay in power? Next, let us hear the opening statement of the opposition side. For us, Spanish perspective is a reliable source since the Spaniards only want what's best for the people they govern, which are based on what Jose Montero Ividal and Rafael Isguerdo stated. They thought that the Cavite mutiny was the starting point of the Filipinos to oust Spaniards from the Philippines. They also stated that the idea of the Filipinos to exile Spaniards is because of the writings of the propagandas and other liberal thinkers. From Isguerdo, who is the Governor General of the Philippines at that time, wrote a letter to the King of Spanish that the Filipino priests planned to discharge the Spanish rule and replace the three priests, Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, or which are known as the Gumburza, as the leaders of the Philippine government. And from him, the Gumburza attract the enemies of the Spaniards by, co by promising them that they will have money and power as long as they discharge the Spaniards. Isgerdo and Vidal also stated that it was really planned by the Filipino priests and liberal thinkers to oust Spaniards and Cavite mutiny is the starting point of their rise and their revolution by killing the Cavite arsenal and then serial killings of high-ranking officials of Spain and followed by massacre of friars. So, under Isgerdo's government, the Gumburza were sentenced to death by Garote in front of many people to prevent revolution against them and showing them that it will also be their end if they fight against Spaniards. Wow, what a really great way to start this debate. Now, we will move on to the question and answer portion of our debate. Let's start from the Spanish side. Question number one. Were the repercussions of the Cavite mutiny solely affected the Filipinos leaving out the Spanish? Again, were the repercussions of the Cavite mutiny solely affected the Filipinos leaving out the Spanish? For us, the Spanish perspective claims that they also injure damaging effects, such as the betrayal of the Filipinos who believed that the events of 1872 were the result of a large-scale plot to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines by educated leaders, mestizos, native lawyers, native clergy, and even the residents of Manila and Cavite. Many Spanish soldiers also died because of the mutiny. After Filipino killed senior Spanish officers, they supposedly had murderous intentions toward the friars. The rockets fired from Intramuros were the signal they used to locate these conspirators in Manila and Cavite. We would like to say yes in this question. It is true that there are also losses on the Spanish side. However, 11 lives are incomparable to the rights, peace, and independence that they all took from us. For 333 years, Filipinos endured the cruelty of these authorities. 
I beg to disagree with the thoughts that they had a victim moment in this particular event. Considering the fact that they are all invaders, whatever the damages they all have experienced in my own land, those are consequences of their greed. They all have brought those things to themselves. Yes, they lost 11 lives, but those 11 lives are the one who are high-ranking personnel that are headed by Fernando El Madrid. We can say that the Spanish losing 11 lives is not as many as what the Filipino lost by losing those people can have a huge impact on the Spanish. But the Filipino experienced huge effect during that time, and that was the execution of the Gumbursa. The Filipinos were greatly angered and resentful as a result of what happened. They questioned the Spanish government and demanded changes. They were falsely accused of treason and sedition when the Christs only wanted to fight for the right of their fellow native Christs against Spanish abuses. Thank you very much, our dear participants, for your wonderful exchange of thoughts and ideas. Now, let us proceed to our next question. For question number two, is it just right or necessary that the laborers and soldiers led by Sergeant Fernando La Madrid initiated the Cavite Mutiny? Good day, everyone, to our moderator, Ms. Lostanias, and audiences. My team will stand for the Filipino side. And to answer the question, yes, it was necessary for the laborers and soldiers led by Sergeant Fernando La Madrid to initiate the Cavite Mutiny. These people were the most affected by what Governor General Esquerdo had passed, and it is their right to revolt against the Spanish to protect and fight for the voices of every Filipino. And according to the Cavite Mutiny Filipino version of Dr. Tavera's account, Governor General Esquerdo abolished the native Filipino soldiers and laborers' exemption from paying the annual tribute tax and rendering forced labor that was enacted by the previous Governor General, Carlos Maria de la Torre. Filipinos, particularly soldiers and laborers, naturally resented the loss of privileges. And this particular case reflects on how the Spaniards removed our rights to acquire a just treatment from the government and removed our freedom as citizens of our own country. A district in Sampaloc, Manila celebrated a feast of the Virgin of Loreto. The feast celebrated with the usual fireworks display. Two people in Cavite mistook the fireworks as a sign for the attack, and Sergeant Fernando La Madrid led the mutiny and other mutineers. They seized the fort and killed the Spanish officers. The Spanish government in Manila accumulated and sent troops under General Felipe Hinogs to recover the fort. The regiment quelled and besieged mutiny, killed many mutineers including Sergeant Fernando La Madrid, and sentenced others to death and forced labor. Consequently, Governor General Rafael Escardo I. Gutierrez used the mutiny to implicate the Gumburza and other notable Filipino intellectuals for their liberal learnings. People then knew that General Rafael Esquerdo y Gutierrez as an iron-fisted leader that led to incarceration, banishment, execution of Filipino professionals, intellectuals, businessmen, and priests such as Gumburza to Garot at Bagumbayan. Historical accounts that corroborated the 1872 Cavite mutiny show supporting evidences and no chances of falsifiability, amassing, and or discerning information before jumping to conclusion. Shows that we have skills that weighing evidences to find the veracity of an event such as 1872 Cavite mutiny. Besides, corroboration teaches us to find and confirm supporting evidences and theory. Yes, Sergeant Fernando La Madrid's attack with 200 Filipino soldiers and laborers resulted in the deaths of 11 Spanish officers. But that attack was their strategy to defend themselves from Spanish oppression. Additionally, you stated in your claims that Governor General Esquerdo was known for his iron fist type of governance. And from this assertion alone, it can justify the motives of our Filipino mutineers' attack on the Spaniards. He contradicted the liberal government of Governor General de la Torre, he abolished the privileges of the Filipinos, and most importantly, our freedom. And the execution of the three priests Gomburza is another issue you have mentioned. According to Vidal's and Esquerdo's report, it was the Spaniards' decision 
to execute them and stop Filipinos from making the situation worse as they believe that the Filipinos' motive was to overthrow the regime. In this event, the priests and laymen were arrested, presumed guilty even if there were no legal proceedings, and were then executed. And this is a problematic case that signifies the awakened strong feelings of anger and resentment among us Filipinos. Based on your answers, the Cavite mutiny indeed had many flaws. That's why it was considered unsuccessful, especially for the side of the Filipinos. However, the flaws in the Spanish administration towards the Filipinos was also the reason of this tragic event in Cavite. Next, let's have the third and last question. For question number three, did the Cavite mutiny happen because of Governor Rafael Izquierdo's iron fist type of government? We support the Filipino side, so I will say yes to the question. Because Governor General Rafael Izquierdo of Spain established an iron fist style of rule. That's why the Cavite mutiny happened. Because of this leadership, the Spanish government took away many of the advantages, privileges, and even rights that every Filipino worker craved. The Filipino point of view asserts that they don't want to live under this kind of authority, and that they are aware that the Spanish sold them into slavery in their own nation. They seek to defend their rights as Filipino citizens through armed conflict. So yes, it is accurate to say that this type of management or leadership can motivate Filipinos to initiate the Cavite mutiny. For the Spanish side, I stand against the accusation of the Filipinos because as for Governor General Rafael Izquierdo, he disliked the liberal reforms made by De La Torre and would work against them. That's why he removed the privilege that the Garda Civil and laborers enjoyed. This is just how he wanted to govern the Philippines. But the Filipinos overacted to removal of their privilege and initiated the mutiny. Okay, so that ends our debate regarding the event in 1872, which is the Cavite Mutiny. First of all, I would like to commend both sides who did a very good job in terms of defending their sides and pointing out their ideas on the topic. For the Spanish side, they claimed that they also endured damaging effects, such as the betrayal of the Filipinos, who believed that the events of 1872 were the result of a large-scale plot to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines by educated leaders, mestizos, native lawyers, native clergy, and even the residents of Manila and Cavite. They also believe that the mutiny did not happen because of how Izquierdo removed the privileges of the Filipinos but how they reacted to it. On the other hand, the Filipino side claims that their people were the most affected by what Governor General Izquierdo had passed. This particular case reflects on how the Spaniards removed their rights to acquire a just treatment from the government and removed their freedom as citizens of their own country. And it is their right to revolt against the Spanish to protect and fight for the voices of every Filipino. Based on these testimonies, personally I will take the side of the Filipinos since I also believe that it was the Filipino people who were greatly affected by the situation. Even the fact that they are on their own country, but the Spanish administration is the one who governs and rule among them is quite hard to imagine. I cannot blame them for reacting that way because the removal of their privileges must have really affected their way of living during that time. They were forced to abide with the laws even if it was difficult for them. That's why they initiated the mutiny out of frustrations. And this wraps up the debate. Once again, thank you very much. I am Kala Janine Listanias and it is my honor to be your moderator.